Okay, like I said, today we are going to be talking about chemical reactions and chemical equations along with the law of conservation of matter. You have two note sheets um, titled this. One of them um, looks like this. And the other sheet <coughs> excuse me, looks like this. So we are going to start with the very first one that says uh, chemical reactions and e chemical equation notes. And as we go through, we're going to have a discussion and we're going to be completing these notes. And, um, and then we're going to look at some demonstrations to make, help our notes, to make our notes more understandable, kind of bring our notes to life. All right, a chemical reaction. Are they in my desk? Okay. So this is a process. Tell me in your own words, what is a chemical reaction? Duran, think about it first. Make sure it makes sense in your head. All right. Well, you can't use the, what, what, let, me ex, let me say what he said in case you didn't hear him. It said when two or more elements uh, react to each other. We don't want to use the word reaction in our definition of a chemical reaction because we're trying to figure out what a chemical reaction is. So let's break this down a little bit more, um, gentlemen and ladies in the back. When you say, when we know something chemically happened, we know what? It changes what? The identity. Okay. What does the word reaction mean? Raise your hand. The word reaction. Kastasia. Okay, an effect. Result. So then now think about it and tell me what's a chemical reaction. In your own words, think about it. if it's not scientific. Don't try to give me your scientific dissertation of it. Just tell me if someone said there's been a chemical reaction in everyday life, what is that? Uh, if there's like the identity of a chemical as an effect. No. Now, give me an example then. Let's use an example, see if that will help us. Duran, shh. Give me an example. Uh, like uh, the uh, spray, like the air spray, uh, the spray, and when you put the lighter to it, and you press the spray button. Okay, that's combustion. Okay, give me another example. Uh, give, me, give me one, Bryson. Help us out. <laughs> no. <laughs> give me something else. How do you know if there's, if there's been a reaction? Okay, give me something else. Um, when it starts steaming. No, like that's not. That That is an evidence that there may be, but I want an extra example. Didn't I give you. Go ahead. I want an example. For instance, on Valentine's Day, somebody may have gotten jewelry from their, from their bay. And what might have happened? What might have happened? Your finger turned green. Is that a reaction? Yeah. If you use some lotion that maybe you were, was bought for you or some type of cream and you put it on your face and your face starts blotching up in red spots, that's a reaction, correct? It wasn't there before. The identity, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of talking. Something else has happened. So a chemical reaction, this is the process. You should be writing because I'm writing. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a process where one or more substances. Now, thinking back to your notes when we did a tree map and we broke down what matter was, we said it was a substance or a mixture. What are substances? Don't look at me. You need to be getting in your notes. What are substances? This would be on your notes when you had page 18, types of matter. Brian. Your element, or element or a compound. So this is telling us, this is a process where one or more elements or compounds, because we're talking about substances, combine. What does combine mean? Come together. Very good. Where they combine and <clears throat> change
to make how can we finish this sentence to make it true? To make just one subs one new substance or one or more. One or more new and we can even add the word different because it has to be totally different from what was there. Substance. <coughs> Excuse me. Down here, we have two types of energy reactions. So we're going to list that here. Two types <coughs> of, sorry about the handwriting, I'm trying to write lopsided. Energy reactions. Duran, move up to the front. We have endothermic and exothermic. We look at the word endo. What do you think that means? Inside. Inside. What is the word thermic or thermo? Kastasia. Heat. Heat is a form of what? Energy. So this is talking about energy being inside, meaning you're putting energy in to the reaction. So an endothermic reaction is when... A chemical reaction uses energy. Before we finish the sentence, what are some forms of energy? You told me heat was one, light. Sound is another. Okay, force is another. And electricity. All right, so when a chemical reaction uses energy to make new substances. <laughs> So energy is being used. So for example, you know how at Scarewinds they give you the glow sticks or the little glow necklaces and you have to break them so that they light up? That breaking of it is, that it's a force. You are using energy to cause a chemical reaction. Once you break it, the chemicals in there mix together to create the light. All right? So energy actually is on both sides of that one. All right. Exothermic. What do you think the word exo means? Out. So what do you, raise your hand and th tell me what you think an exothermic reaction may be. Jamil. Mm -mm. Not when it happens outside. Try it. Try, try to formulate it. I'm listening. Help them out, Amalia. Um, it's probably a reaction where you can your No, not quite. Your senses do tell, but you have to give be a little bit more specific with it. Bryson, help her out. No, not quite, Crustacea. Uh, like something that releases. Releases what? Energy. energy. For endothermic, it uses energy. For an exothermic, this is when energy, and energy again is heat, light, sound, force, electricity, is released
during a chemical reaction. What's the key word in the definition for endothermic reaction? What's the key word, uh, Eddie? Really? An endothermic. Oh. Uses. Endothermic uses energy. Key words in exothermic, Patrick? Releases. Releases energy. Can I move this paper for a second? Okay. So let's just take a look at an example. When we have hydrogen and oxygen, and we put them together, and this is not a balanced equation, meaning it's not a true equation, but it is how it works, right? When we have hydrogen and oxygen, what do we get? Water. Right, it is two hydrogens, but I'm just saying if we, we can get we can get water. We can also get high, uh, peroxide if we um, have it correctly. But if we mix hydrogen and oxygen together, a possibility is us getting water. Correct. Yes. We can say that hydrogen and oxygen are independent of one another here. Correct. Yes. On this side of the equation. On this side of the equation, are they independent? No, they're, no, they're together. They've been married. They've bonded. All right. Now. We could say, if we go through the process of electrolysis, hydrogen and oxygen, they were dating, and they're, now, they're a couple here. We could say they no longer like each other. They're breaking up. You need to wait a minute. They're breaking up, so you have water, and then they break up. And you end up with hydrogen and oxygen. Their bond has what? Broken. Broken. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Bye-bye. So your bonds form and your bonds break. can break. Are these both chemical reactions? Yes. Patrick. And why are they chemical reactions? Something new was formed. So when we look back at our paper, your question on your paper says, what happens during chemical reactions? What just happened, though? What happened with those bonds? They break and they... Combined. Combined. So during a chemical reaction, bonds form and or, because sometimes you can have them just forming, or sometimes you can have them just breaking, or you can have them do both. Bonds form and or break to, and like Rajalyn said, to make new substances. The key part is making new substances. But in order to do that, bonds have to break or bonds have to form. Question so far? Okay. Then looking down, evidence of chemical reaction. When I say evidence, this means that these are signs. It doesn't mean that this is, if you see this, then yes, a chemical reaction has taken place. This means that if you see these things, there is a possibility that a chemical reaction has taken place. What are some things that you can think of that will tell you that there's been a chemical reaction? Fire would be the release of what? The release of heat is a what? Form of energy. So one example is a release of energy. 
and that's not just fire. Mm -hmm. That would be heat, light, sound, electricity, force. What's another example which would be evidence that there has been a chemical reaction? Christasia. There's nothing in your notes right now. It's got to kind of think of some things. How, how would you be able to say, ooh, this has been a reaction? Yeah. Chemical reaction. Like like, well, right now we're just looking for signs. Sometimes we may not know the substance changes. We have to kind of look for these signs. Jayla, help us out. What do you mean looks different? Uh, but you may not always be able to tell that. Eddie. Odor change. <laughs> it, it could be. Odor change could be a bad smell or a good smell. For instance, let's say you got your new elite socks. You put them on before your game. When you put them on. Shh, Roger, we don't need add, added, added stuff. When you put them on. I'll wait. They're brand new, right out of the champs, right out of the store. You put them on, they smell fine. They're, they're brand fresh new. But then you play basketball, and you got a couple tournament games, and you take those socks off. There is an odor change that is evidence that there has possibly been a chemical reaction. How? And let's say you mix all of these ingredients together, eggs, batter, some milk, some butter, some sugar, and you put it in the oven, there has been an odor change. It smells good. Like if you're making brownies or cake, that, I'll wait. That odor change is an example or evidence that there may have been a chemical reaction. What's another piece of evidence that you might pick up and say there may have been? Kaya? Color change. Good. She didn't say color change, Rajalyn. She said, there's been identity change. Um, like for instance, Ladrika, turn around. Like we mentioned, when you put the lotion on your face and you start blotching up red, that's color changes. When you put a ring on your finger that may not be real and your finger turns green, that's a color change. It's evidence that there may have possibly been a chemical reaction. Give me another one. Not shape doesn't necessarily have to change. No. What about... You said smoke. So gas formation. And you know that gas is formed if there's bubbling. If there may be some fizzing. Like at about... 12 o'clock, 12.30, you're going to hear some bubbling in your stomach, mm -hmm. some yeah. growling, because your body is going through a chemical reaction. You're hungry. After lunch, we may hear some sound, <laughs> which may be a fart or a burp, and that is also a evidence that there may be a chemical reaction. All right. I'll wait. There is also if the temperature changes. Now I know that we put release of energy at the top, but I'm putting temperature change here because how many of you have ever gotten maybe like a bruise from a sport? Or a knot or something on your head and you got an ice pack. When you got that ice pack, not I'm not talking about a bag full of ice. I'm talking about an ice pack that they had to break and shake up so that it turns cold. That is a temperature change. It wasn't cold when you got it, but you had to break it and shake it up so that the chemicals mixed together so that it would become cold. Is it a temperature change when, um, say, your body cold, but you got a sore and it's sore Yes. That means your body is doing something. It's going through a chemical reaction to fix that sore. I'll wait. We have class going on on this side of the class, Patrick. Go ahead, Bryson. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right.
Anastasia. I was kind of thinking, like, if you like, taste it, like, if you like, taste it, like, you know, you like no, because you wouldn't know if it tastes differently if you're tasting it for the first time, but that's what, it just tastes like it. No, like, you know, like, say if, like, you have, like, I know if you have, like, I know what you're saying, if you have, like, rotten milk, but then that's going to fall, that's going to fall under this category where a solid forms in a liquid. So remember, if you have spoiled milk, it starts to chunk up. That's called a precipitate. If a precipitate forms, like precipitation. So when you have milk, when you have milk and it curdles, meaning that it gets spoiled, it's going to start having these little solid pieces in there. That's a precipitate. That's evidence that there may have been a chemical reaction. You're also going to get some odor change. You may even get some color change. Uh, Duran. Shh. Duran, you don't need to announce that you have the question. That's why you rose your hand. Just ask the question. Okay, well, if I know that I can release a remedy, but what makes the um, liver taste okay? When, like, the It's evidence that there may be a chemical reaction. But what chemical reaction It all depends on what you're, what you're putting together. Yes. It gives it a different color. Yeah, uh, Roger. It could. That's when baby it spoils in baby's stomach because they have acid in their stomach. That's why they spit up. Exactly. Uh, it's not a chemical react. It's a reaction to substances in your body where your body's trying to release them. We're going to talk about that more in biology. All right. So, Danny, please sit down. Now, remember I said that these, you want to make sure you write this down, these are only indications. What does indication mean? Signs. These are only signs that a chemical, you all should be writing with me. And don't say it. <clears throat> this says reaction. Chemical reaction may have taken place. So these are all signs that a chemical reaction may have taken place. And when I say there's signs, for example, if you take um, water and you put it on the stove and you turn the heat on, is it going to bubble? Yeah. Yeah. Is it going to have a temperature change? Yeah. But is there a chemical reaction? Oh. Yeah. No, because it's turning from a liquid to a yeah. gas. It's still water, though. Let's say you have the same water and you put it in the freezer. Does it change temperature? Yeah. It goes from warm or, or regular temp room temperature to cold. But is there a chemical reaction? No. No, you just have frozen water. So these are only indicators or a sign that a chemical reaction may have taken place. What is the sure factor that you know a chemical reaction has taken place, Eddie? How do you know for sure a chemical reaction has taken place? Brian, help us out. If there's a new substance. You know... For sure, you need writing this. There has been a chemical reaction if a new. Jill, I'm about to move you because I don't think that's your seat either. The new substance form. So you can look for these different signs and you say, yes, there's a possibility. Yes, there's a possibility. But unless there's a new substance form, then no. <laughs> All right. Yes, God, uh, Eddie. Um, I know, I know 
When it's regular water, when it's liquid, solid, or gas? Liquid. It doesn't turn white. It has a bunch of little cracks in, inside the ice. That's why it looks white. All right. Flip the paper over to the back. Yes. You got to wait a minute. All right. Just like a mathematical equation in math, we have <coughs> chemical equations in science. In math, a math equation is a representation of what's going on. For instance, let's say you work um, two days a week. You get $50 each day you work. Then you'll be doing two times 50, and we'll tell you how much money you would get, correct? So that's a representation of... Oh, wait. A representation of your salary, a representation of how much money you're going to get. A chemical equation is a representation of a chemical reaction. So we can tell you what's going on by using a chemical equation. So it's a representation of a chemical reaction, and it shows, so it's showing the relationship, and that relationship we're talking about is the bonds, so I'm putting AKA bond, between what we have called the reactants. and products. And it's written with chemical formulas. So for example, this right here is a chemical equation. Danny, go back to your seat because you did not raise your hand and ask too long. And it is showing the relationship between what we have in this thing called reactants and products. And it's written with formulas. These are formulas. On the left side of the equation, we have what's known as our reactant. All of this are the reactants. That's everything on the left side of the arrow. Reactants, meaning these, are, meaning these are things that are going to react together. When you think about the chemical equation, think about when you go into a store. When you go into the grocery store, you are reacting with the sales clerk. You are communicating some type of purchase. You're going in there to get something. This would be the door. This would be the equal sign like in a math equation. It's called a yield. It really means makes. So things react together and they yield to what we call the product. When you come out of the store, you come out with a product. You went in with money. You reacted your money with the clerk. You came out with a product. The small number, who remembers what the small numbers are? Eddie. These are your subscripts. And the larger numbers that you see in the equation, Brian, these are your coefficients. You will be responsible for identifying, you will be responsible for knowing how to identify a chemical equation. Reactants are always, always, always going to be on the left side. Products are always, always going to be on the right side even if bonds are broken. So even if there's a plus sign on the right, that is still going to be a product. Looking at your key, this is the key for this equation.
The part of the equation is like, which part of the equation is like an equal sign and it separates the reactants from the products, Duran? This would be your yield. What part of the equation is the starting materials in a reaction always on the left side, Patrick? These are your reactants. Part of the equation where it's the substance formed from a chemical reaction always on the right side, Ray. Right. Product. If you know these, do not wait for me to call them out. You should be just filling them in. The next part of the equation is the part that identifies the amount of atoms of an element. Eddie, this is your subscript. And the last part of the equation is a number that is in front of an element or compound and is distributed to all associated elements or compounds. Jamil, your coefficient. Now, if there were energy, which uh, there would be energy in this um, equation, it would be on this side of the equation. Energy is not something that we have to label as a um, product or a reactant because energy is not matter, which means that it does not have what and does not take up what. Excellent. All right, so now let's look down here. <coughs> Excuse me. We're still talking about this equation here. We're going to count the reactant atoms, and we're going to count the product atoms. Remember, all of this is the reactants, even if there's a plus sign. What are the elements that we have? We still have to list our elements. What are the elements that we have as our reactants, Jayla? Okay, turn around and look this way. Kwan. We have hydrogen and we have oxygen. I'm looking at this equation. You're not listening. We're still just talking about that equation. All right. How many hydrogen, Simon, do we have? Four. The reason why he says four is because we have a subscript of two, and we have a co coefficient so that we multiply that and we get four. How many oxygen do we have, Aaron? Two. We have the subscript. We do not distribute that coefficient because we have the plus sign. Notice all of these are your reactants. What's our total number? Six. Six. Counting our products. What elements do we have as our products? Patrick. Hydrogen. How many hydrogen do we have? Devin. As the product. How many hydrogen do we have as the product in this equation? We have one hydrogen. How many hydrogen do we have? Four. He says four because we have a subscript and then a coefficient of two, which gives us four. How many oxygen do we have, uh, Madison? How many oxygen do we have in this equation for the product? One oxygen. We have a coefficient, just like in math. Don't tell her. Let her figure it out. That doesn't help anybody. So we have two. What's our total number? All right. Any questions there? Okay, so then let's look down at our bottom equation. C12H22O11 is table sugar. This is the sugar that you would use for your Kool-Aid. It's also the sugar that I have in this container here. What I'm going to do is we're going to add energy. So we have table sugar. We don't need to repeat, guys. Just listen. We're going to add energy, which is heat. And then we're going to see what comes out. But let's take a look and read the equation. What's going to come out? So we're going to have carbon. And what? 
What's H2O? Water. So the equation is saying, remember we said that a chemical equation is a representation of a chemical reaction showing the relationship between oh, it's not on there. reactants and products. So it's showing the bonds. Now before we do this, let's take a look back down here. I'm, I'm hearing extra talking. Here we have a bond. They're all bonded together, correct? Mm -hmm. What happened after the equation? They broke. The bonds broke. Energy. Think about it this way. Whenever you're using energy, that's going to break the bonds. Like if you're in a heated situation with a friend, after that day, you might just feel like you're not friends anymore for that moment. It breaks that bond. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. No. Oh. All right, it's upside down, but I'll, I'll wait. Give me one second because I got to hold that up. It's not sturdy. But it's upside down, but you still see the sugar in the container, correct? It's the white stuff here. I'm going to do it my other way. I'm going to add the heat directly to the sugar because this, uh, my fire is not uh, penetrating through the glass. Because my um, I wait. I'm in the middle of talking. You're talking. Because my bottom uh, thing that works as a candle is not working right for me. So what I'll do is I'll add the fire here. It's not going to melt because we just I just told you in your chemo, chemical equation what's going to happen. If we look at, I'm going to stop heating it for one second. If we look at the um, sugar, it's still slowly starting to turn brown. And it's starting to bubble up. That bubbling is the liquid, which is the what in the equation? It's the water. If, well, you can't see it because you're not as close, but it, it clumped together. It's starting to bubble. If I had a top, i wait. The reason why I had the top on it so the water could be captured. Right now, the smoke that's being released is the water evaporating. So, therefore, that's why you don't see the liquidy stuff in there. But if I continue to light the sugar on fire, eventually, that brown is going to turn to what color? What color is carbon? What color is charcoal? Black. That's carbon. So it will turn black. All right, so let's go back to our sheet. We're not on an intermission. We're not on an intermission. All 
All right. So back to our sheet. Under here it says, stop clicking that pencil. It says signs of a chemical reaction. What were some things that we saw that could have been evidence that there may have been a chemical reaction? Roger Lynn. Okay, there was some bubbling. What else? Eddie? There was color change. If you were sitting close, you may have, there may have been an odor change. Again, these were all signs. Yes. Did you say you saw smoke? What type, I'm sorry, how was energy involved in this? Bryson. So how was energy involved? Did I use it or was it released? We used energy. So what type of reaction was this? Endothermic. Endothermic. Why? Energy used. Energy used. Now for this equation, let's count our atoms for the reactants. What do we have? What elements do we have, Patrick? Carbon. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Durian, how many carbon do we have? 12. How many hydrogen do we have, Drew? 22. How many oxygen do we have, Kwan? 11. What's our total? Uh, 45. All right. Looking at our product, what elements do we have? Carbon, Carbon hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Ladrika, how many carbon do we have? One. Well, we have one, but then we have a coefficient of, so how many do we have? How many hydrogen, Duran, do we have? Well, we start off with the two, and we have a coefficient of 11, which gives us 22. And how many oxygen do we have, Patrick? One. Well, we start off with oh, one, 11. but we have a coefficient of 11, which gives us? Which gives us? Oh, What's our total? 45. Okay. Do we notice something about the reactants and the products when we're counting atoms? Yeah. Jayla. They have the same amount, meaning they're equal or they're balanced. balanced. So that takes us to our next piece of notes, which is law of conservation of matter or mass. Jenny, where are you behind at? You don't need his paper to count the atoms. You know how to count the atoms. Give him his paper back. All right. What does conservation mean? Jayla, Bryce and Eddie, stop it. To save, meaning we're not going to get rid of anything, correct? All right, so remember that when we talk about the definition. But before we do that, let's look at this equation that we have. Remember, a chemical equation is just a representation of a chemical reaction. So we look at this stuff here. Let's fix this equation, however. This should be CHCOOH. There should be a C here. This should be CH3COOH. So it should be CH3COOH. I'm going to write diagonal like this so that I can fit my words. But this stuff is acetic acid. How many of you ever think that you've used acetic acid before? Patrick, what do you think you've used it in? No. No. That's acetone. This is vinegar. So everyone, 
were probably, and not just the chips, it may be used in your cooking. All right. Na NaH CO3, this is called sodium, you don't need to watch me write, you can write, sodium hydrogen and CO3 is carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. This is baking soda. Can you hear me? You don't need to see what I'm writing. You heard what I said. Well, sodium, acetic acid, and vinegar. Jenny, I'm writing it with you all, so you should be writing it at the same time. The other one is sodium. If you all would stop talking, then you all can stay caught up. Sodium, hydrogen, carbonate, which is baking soda. When we put those two things together, you have all have done it before, especially if you made a volcano. But if you never made that, then you've seen it somewhere on a YouTube video or somewhere. So, oh wait. So when you put vinegar and baking soda together, the substance that you're going to end up with is something called sodium acetate, which is A-C-E-T-A-T-E. -E. A-C-E-T-A-T-E, -E, sodium acetate. That's what C-H-C-O-O-N-A is. You're also going to end up with H2O, which is water. So the liquid you'll have is water. You're going to end up with CO2, which is carbon dioxide. And energy is going to be there. What happens when you mix baking soda and water? What do you get? What's, what do you hear? Fizzling. fizzing. That's going to be your energy. You have some fizzing and some bubbling. All right. Now, in a closed system, everything should work out well. What we start with is what we end up with, just like in our notes. I'm going to put this here for a second. That we just, sorry, wrong notes. Just like our notes that we just finished up with here. What we start with is what we end up with. The amount of atoms we start with is the amount of atoms that we end up with. So if I weighed it before, it should end up being the same weight after or same mass. Before the reaction, shh, ladies, should be the same mass after the reactants, correct? All right. So what I have here, I have an empty bottle that I'm going to put some vinegar in. I'm going to add a little bit more vinegar. Uh, this is not intermission time to talk. Pay attention. So I'm going to put some vinegar in a bottle. Shh, Ray, we don't need your opinion about vinegar. And then in the balloon, I have baking soda. See if I can show you. Guys, we don't need your comments. Y'all can sit and, and watch without talking. There's bacon soda in there. So I'm going to take this balloon. Shh, sit down. And before we do anything, I'm going to get the mass of our vinegar and our baking soda. It's fine. It's fine. Um, quiet. When I get the mass, it says. Ryan, what does this say right here? One, it's a glare. 101. 101. What's the mass? What what unit is it? What unit? Grams. Thank you. So, on our paper, in the before area, 
we're writing 101 grams because this is our vinegar and our baking soda. We have not combined them yet. Correct? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm still confused on why y'all keep talking. I'm going to combine our baking soda with our vinegar. Some have been released. So I had to hold it down because some was released and it shouldn't have been. That's that gas formation that we just talked about in, the, in our equation. So it's not helium. For those of you that are saying it's helium, hold this for a second. You just wrote, that is what? What's that gas? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. It's not helium. Ladrika, it's not helium. So now, some of it was released, so the mass may be a little off. But for the most part, it should be pretty much the same. That says 99, but for the sake of argument, I'll wait. For the sake of argument, it really is 101. I had to pull the balloon down because some of the gas released, so we, uh, we actually lost two grams of gas. <coughs> Excuse me. So, for the sake of argument on our papers, we are going to put 101. So a, a chemical equation, again, just to reiterate, a chemical equation is just a shorthand way of expressing a what? Chemical reaction. What were some signs that there was a chemical reaction in this equation? There was some fizzing. What else? Bubbling. How was energy involved? Wait, raise your hand, Patrick. Energy was released. What type of energy reaction is this, Simon? Stop talking. Just write it down if you feel like you know, but you don't need to talk. Exothermic and why, Simon? Energy release. Let's count our atoms in this equation. What, <coughs> excuse me, what are the elements that we have, Kawan, in the reactant side? That's not an element, that's a formula. Oh. What elements do we have? Carbon. Carbon. Oxygen. Why are you going out of order? Carbon, hydrogen. Try to stay in order so you don't confuse yourself. We don't need to say oxygen again because that's an element that we have. Do we have anything else? Yes. Come on. <laughs> Sodium. All right. How many carbon do we have, Akaya? Put your hand down, Eddie. Huh? One? Well, look up here. Three. We got one plus one more in CHCOOH. Plus one in NaHCO3. So we have three. How many hydrogen, Eddie? Um, How'd you get two, Eddie? How many is right here? So we have three here plus how many here? One there plus one more gives us five. How many oxygen do we have, Devin? We have two here, plus three here. 
two here plus three here gives us five. Rodrigo, we have three hydrogen here plus plus one here plus one here. That's five. It's three, three, four, five. That's CH3. Rodrigo. It says CH3. You owe me an apology. Sodium. How many do we have for sodium, Jenny? Just one sodium. Five oxygens would be one, two, plus three gives us five. I didn't, I didn't take away the oxygen. I said it's CH3COOH. All right. For the reactants. What elements do we have, Durian? Yeah. Carbon. And notice he lists them in order. That helps us out when we are looking. First of all, how many? What are the total of reactants that we have? Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. How many carbons do we have for? This should say count the product. I didn't realize that error. Change yours. This should say count the product. All right. How many um, carbons do we have on the product side, Ray? How many carbons do we have on the product side? Three. We have one, two, and three. How many hydrogen, Janie, do we have on the product side? We have three. Plus two gives us five. How many oxygen, Patrick? Five. Two plus three plus two more gives us five. And how many sodium, uh, Jamil? Mm -hmm. How many sodium? And one sodium. What's the total? Fourteen. What do you notice about the two sides of reacting a product? Balanced. It's balanced. So the law of conservation states that matter, because the elements are matter, Cannot, <coughs> excuse me, be created. Why are you not writing? Or destroyed. Notice when we look on the both sides, we have the same amount of atoms on the reactant side as we have on the product side. We cannot create anything and we cannot destroy anything. Notice we have the same elements on the product side as we have on the reactants. We didn't create anything new, and we have not destroyed anything. So the law of conservation of matter means, like Jayla told us, conservation means saved. We saved everything. It has not been created or destroyed. And what that means is the number... of atoms... of an element must be equal on both sides of the equation. Meaning what goes in what? Come must come out. <laughs> What goes in must come out. <laughs> Guys, you do not, this is when you become mature in the area where you do not try to write down every word that I've written down. You see it for yourself. You can pretty much figure out what it is that you need to write. If you're not at that point right now, you really need to move up and try to get to that point. So therefore, a chemical equation must always be what? Balanced. Balanced. So now down below it says, list whether a chemical equation below are balanced. And if not, we have to explain why. Let's take a look. The first thing we want to do is count our atoms. When we count our atoms, we need to separate our reactants from our products by drawing a line. Where will we draw the line under, the plus sign or the arrow? The arrow. The arrow. 
So let's draw an arrow there. And we need to list our elements. What elements do we have on the reactant side, Drew? Uh-huh. And oxygen. How many magnesium do we have, Drew? How many magnesium do we have, Drew? Two. How many oxygen do we have, Bryson? Two. On the product side, it's not for Drica because the two is only distributed to the elements it's close to, just like in math. They're separated by the plus sign, so you don't distribute the coefficient. How many, what elements do we have on the product side, um, Simon? Magnesium and oxygen. How many magnesium do we have, Madison? How many oxygen? Is it balanced? Why is it balanced? Same number of what? Same number of atoms. On both sides. All right. Akaya, tell me the first thing I need to do here to check and see if this is balanced. The second equation. Where am I drawing the line? Underneath the arrow. Aaliyah, tell me how many, what elements do we have on the reactant side for this equation? Chlorine, good. Potassium and iodine. Try to make this I a lot larger than this L so you'll see it. All right, how many chlorine, Devin, do I have? Two. How many potassium do I have, Rogelin? One. How many iodine do I have, Ray? Two. Oh, no, I'm saying question. On the product side, Duran, what do I have? Uh, we have uh, potassium, chlorine, and iodine. How many potassium do I have, uh, Aaron, on the product side? How many chlorine, Brian? Four. How many iodine, Janie? One, two. Two. Is it balanced? Three. Well, we have two chlorine and one chlorine. We have one potassium and one potassium. We have one iodine and two iodine. Is that balanced? Yes. No, it doesn't not. matter if the total is still four. Did we have the same amount of each thing on each side? No. 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 We, had, we started off with one iodine. We ended up with two. Oh. We started off with one potassium. We did end up with one. But we started off with two chlorine. We ended up with one. We destroyed and created matter. Is it balanced? No. It's not balanced. Because... Matter was created and destroyed. And we learned in the law of conservation of matter, matter cannot be created or destroyed. It's not a balanced equation. And this is why when you're listing your elements, you need to list them in order. So if you have chlorine first here, over here, you should put chlorine first here so you can see. Do those equal? Do those equal? Do those equal? All right. What do I do here, Kawan? Let's do this last one. Where? Right here? Under what? Excellent. All right. Keep going. Where do I put it? Which is called the what side? Good. Okay. How many sodium? How many oxygen? Good. What do I do next? Well, I could save my total, but I'm going to save that. No, just go to the next step. What? Sodium. Do I have anything else? Okay. Okay. Uh huh. 
Well, I have two with the coefficient of two. Now, the reason why I stopped them and said we're not going to total them up is because we're no longer, when we're seeing if it's balanced, we're no longer concerned about the total number of atoms on each side for the most part. We want them to be the total number, but we want them to be the total number of atoms for each element. So like if we look at the first example, there's two magnesiums on the re reactants, two magnesiums on the product. Two oxygens on the reactant, two re oxygens on the product. We look here, we need to look at each atom. <coughs> Excuse me. There's four sodium on the reactant, but there's how many on the product? Two. There's two oxygen on the reactant, how many on the product? Four. Is it balanced? No. No. Why? Excellent. Because of so we can just say because of the law of conservation of matter. Your homework. Flip over. Stop talking. Um, your homework is on the back. It looks like this. Make sure you. Make sure you put your name on it and your number. The first part, you are filling in the blanks to make this a true statement. The second part, numbers one through four, you are um, counting the atoms. You don't need to total up each side because you're looking at the atoms for each element. You're going to list whether they're balanced or not and explain like we did on the front. There's a change that we need to make, so if you look at number four, cross off this equation and you're going to rewrite another equation. The equation, for no, no, I'm not holding up, I'm writing it. The equation for number four, as soon as it focuses, you're going to write Na it'll focus in just a second. Na plus H C L And that's going to yield to 2NaCl. On the bottom, you are going to identify the type of energy reaction. And then you're going to explain why it's that type of energy reaction. Any questions? Okay. Then this, this concludes the lesson.